and welcome to Matt Loves Motors. The car in today's video is quite simply the Land Rover Defender. Let's talk about the design of the new Defender. I think Land Rover have been very brave here actually because they could have gone down the same route as Jeep have with the latest Wrangler or Mercedes have with the latest G-Wagen and made it look exactly like the old one. And what they've actually done is created a new very modern vehicle but with sort of lots of nods to the original Defender. So if we look around here at the front uh, actually this it seems a bit too aggressive really to, to me I feel like they should have made it a little more friendly looking maybe to make it look more like the original Defender less aggression would have been nice um, if we move down the side of the vehicle I'll have to move back a bit it's quite big um, it's got that real nice regal Defender sort of stance which I do really like and then at the back end we have some real strong Defender vibes here in the shape of the shoulders in the sort of shape of the tailgate. The lights, yeah, I do think they're a bit fussy, but apparently it had to have the little extra lights for legal reasons. So if you see the car from an angle, you can still see the lights on the other side, as we can see there. Side opening tailgate, very Defender. And as we can see, nice big boots. Sorry about my slightly shaky hand. Um, oh, and dodgy exposure. I reckon that might that boot could definitely fit a mat when the exposure decides to there we go right oh. it has one of those silly tarpaulin parcel shafts that my eye go oh no let's just uh unhinge this there we go so we've got some um checker plating we've got uh that's quite a funny noise actually uh, we've got uh, a big storage compartment under there where the uh, extra seats would live if you had the 5 plus 2 version. What else have we got in here? We've got these little hooks here for shopping bags. There's several of them dotted around. We've got these quite cool um, oops, I'm sorry, these quite cool nets. And also up here as well, these straps for carrying things. Um, back seats, naturally, fold down in the usual way oh, sort of 60 40 split actually the middle bit that goes down and then that it would go down if the headdress wasn't in the way and then so there's this one i think the headdress do a thing let's have a look shall we it's raining quite heavily now uh one thing to mention, big back doors. This comes out a long way. Not sure I like that. Bit big. Uh, headdress don't do a thing, but if you take them off, then they'll fold flat. <laughs> now, more importantly, will this boot fit a mat? Let's find out. <laughs> Yes, it will, emphatically. Let's move into the cabin. Right. Big back door. I'll just, um, seat belt, does it stay out the way? Yes, it does. Look, the seat belt, hang on. It's sort of designed so it doesn't get in the way when you're folding the seats. The usual uh, isofix. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. What's this? I don't know. No. Okay, I think the squab, I think the squab tilts forward and then the backrest drops down to create a flat four, but I'm doing something wrong. Edit that out. Right. <sighs> okay, here we are in the back. I'll just um, quickly, there we go. Rock and roll. Why don't you work? Never mind. So in here we've got a virtually flat floor all the way across nice wide seats so this is actually a car that's comfortable to sit in the middle of which is very good we've got charging points all over the shop so if i just spin this around we've got these mounts here for screens and there's little usbs in those we've got a bank of charging ports down here 12 volt usb usb another 12 volt and a little tray there with a the rubberized 
insert in it. Got these little airline style pockets. And oh, that's the view out, which you can't see very well because of the camera. Let's move into the front. Oh, on my way out, just a little out here. We've got speaker, speaker, nice little door bin. Oh, that's a nice rubberized, uh, rubberized finish there. This is this has got rubber on the back of it as well. Very sturdy. This is a nice padded topper here on this door. Lots of exposed sort of Allen key heads very utilitarian so straight away in here we've got very defender-esque dashboard this is sort of earlier defender and going back through the 110s and the 90s and the series this kind of shelf this bit here this magnesium cross member that's structural and it says defender in it just to remind you what you mind you what you're driving again not on the steering wheel just just in case you've forgotten oh and there's a picture on the Oh, you can't see that. There's a little picture, just in case you've definitely forgotten. Okay, uh, so we've got the driving controls here for the gearbox. Doesn't actually seem to be a button for the um, parking brake. So it's a, sorry, the handbrake, but it isn't actually a handbrake. So I think when you put it in park, it just happens. Uh, climate controls, uh, when you push, bu push this button down here that you can't see. Uh, it does the ventilation controls, and when you push the one above it, it does terrain response. So these dials do different things, and you've got controls for low and high range and um, uh, suspension there too. Start stop button, touch screen, which we'll come on to, and uh, this this actually I particularly like. I'll have to talk a bit more about this later. Frame this mirror with clear sight camera display. So you flick this switch here, and it turns into a camera. Look. That's really good because the view out the back is not good. Blame the spare wheel for that one. And the other thing, and I have not seen this on a car since my very first car, a little VW Polo that I had, a middle sun visor. Look at that. It's so sweet. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay, um, next thing to do, I think, is to uh, go for a drive. Actually, before we go, let's uh, just have a quick look under the bonnet. The, uh, Catch is just down here. It just reminded me when I saw it that I should uh, show you all the under the uh, under the hood. And there it is, the uh, Ingenium D240. So we've got a four-cylinder turbo diesel, part of JLR's Ingenium range. Uh, this one's 240 PS, I think, rather than I'm not sure. I think it's 230 something horsepower, which works out as 240 PS. Uh, so you can get it with. Uh, the 200 PS version of this engine, or you can also get it with uh, a couple of petrol. So a four-cylinder turbo Ingenium petrol and a new, the new straight six Ingenium petrol, which I think has turbocharging and mild hybrid assistance. Um, I'm pretty sure it does in the Range Rover Sport, which is what it's also pitted to. Probably not going to be a big seller in the UK though, really. It's going to be that, isn't it? Really. Right. Steering wheel moving. Oh, it's so exciting. We'll just turn it down to zero. Right. Pull the trigger. Sorry, I've not really spoken for a while. I'm just making sure that all is well. It should be okay. It should be okay. It should be okay. I may have been worrying about that more than I needed to. One thing I can tell you about the Defender straight away is it goes well.
brakes and the gearbox aside. Rides well, it's quiet, it's smooth, it's easy. It feels really well sorted. Probably could have been that kind of So as you can tell, the audio on the uh, the motorway section isn't very good. So I'll step in here in voiceover to explain what it's like on the on the motorway and to to sum up the new Defender. 
So on the motorway, the car was very stable and it was refined. It had cruise control, but it didn't seem to be adaptive. I'm not sure if I was missing something somewhere. Uh, but it did have lane keep assist, which worked very well, very subtly. And it did have blind spot monitoring, which was quite useful. The large door mirrors helped help make it easy to see other vehicles when changing lanes and it just felt really stable and really relaxing on the motorway so very very capable to sum up the defender then uh, let's start with the negatives so the two, the two main negatives are the brakes the grabby brakes and the gearbox with its hesitation and its constant change in its mind with gears uh, also, you could argue, you know, it is it, the size and weight of the vehicle is excessive, and it is and it's it's an expensive car. There's no getting away from that. Uh, prices for the Defender 110, which is currently on sale, starting at around forty-five thousand pounds. But realistically, you're probably going to end up spending fifty plus. Although most people will go down the route of finance with PCP. Uh, let's move on to the positives, though. Uh, I think they've done a great job with the styling on the whole at Land Rover and the interior especially is fantastic. It looks great, it feels great and it's extremely practical. There's loads of space, it's got comfortable seats, it's got um, the latest infotainment system from JLR, Pivi Pro, which is, although I know I've not spoken about it a great deal, it is a, a big step on from their previous infotainment systems. Uh, the menus seem to be logically laid out, it responds well, it, there's no hesitation and uh, graphically it looks really good. So it has that in its favor as well. Uh, it may be a big heavy car, but it's extremely practical and extremely capable. I have no doubts that it'll be absolutely fantastic off-road. It's great on the road and it's actually quite fun to drive. It puts me very much in mind of the Discovery 3 and in my opinion, that's one of the best cars Land Rover has ever made. So that brings me to the end of the video. So. Please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, there'll be another video along very soon. Bye for now. Sorry, my bad. That's where you control your handbrake from.